Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series talking about uh, you've already got it, and we've already covered, I think, four weeks on this, and I am going to be continuing that. But today in the United States is our Labor Day holiday. Of course, if you're watching in any other country, uh, this won't apply. But in the U.S., our phone center will be closed today to give our employees the Labor Day holiday. And what I want to do today is just take a one-day break for my teaching on You've Already Got It and give you a quick update about a European tour that we took in June. I just returned home from that, and I tell you, we had a great, great time. We saw a lot of miracles happen. A lot of people's lives changed, and of course, a lot of testimonies about previous years when I've been over there. And I just wanted to give you a quick update, and also, I've got an interview with uh, one of the ladies that we have supported for many, many years. She's our missionary in uh, Nice and also in Marseille, France. And she's just a wonderful lady. She's come over here to the States, has been out to our house. Uh, Marie Helene was, of course, in France. I don't know how many of you know this, but they don't allow you to have guns and things over there. So when she came over here, I had a 357 Magnum and a holster, and she was just thrilled with this. I found out that in France that the people uh, really embraced Buffalo Bill Cody back in the uh, 1800s, early 1900s, uh, when he was there. They have, uh, I think it's called Cody or Buffalo Grills all over France that we saw. And when you go inside, they've got all this Buffalo Bill Cody memorabilia. So anyway, the Old West is something that's really popular in France. And so Marie Helene was raised with that, and she was out here at our place, and she wanted to shoot our gun, put on the holster, she was uh, shooting from her hip, and I mean she was hitting those cans with deadly accuracy. You don't want to mess with this woman. Anyway, we've got an interview with her. But let me just quickly say that we started out in England. We went over there and held a Grace and Faith Conference. This was our second year to do this. We had around 1,500 that were in attendance, and it was just a, a great time. Not only did we have the regular services where I ministered, Charlie and Jill LeBlanc did the praise and worship. Also, Wendell Parr, uh, who's the director of our world outreach, he was with me, and we held a conference, and day and night we were ministering. We not only had those regular services with the adults, but we had what's called messy church, and that's for the younger kids. And I mean, they did things, uh, and it was appropriately named messy church. I had my granddaughter with me. She's nine years old. And uh, we took her with us, and she loved the messy church. I went in, and I spoke to them and shared with them and uh, had a great time. Then we also had a youth ministry. And in this youth ministry, they asked me to come over and speak one night. And I went over there, and uh, they had me doing things that uh, I, I wouldn't have thought I'd have ever have done. They got me up and had me with a guitar leading praise and worship. It was pretty pitiful, but nonetheless, that was one of the consequences of some things. They had me riding piggyback on a guy and painting his face, and uh, they had an eating contest between me and David Hardesty, but it was, it was something else. But after all of the fun, I got to sharing with them, and a lot of these kids, they had had a tremendous move of God, and I forget the exact number, but there was, I think, close to 20 of the kids that either got born again or really dedicated their life to the Lord. Many of them got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and when I was there, they were asking questions about persecution, and I got to share with them. They got to asking me questions about some of the persecution that came my way when I was in Vietnam, and I tell you, it was powerful. God really spoke to these kids, and then I ministered to them and prayed for them, and uh, it's going to be a significant time. Many of those young people will never be the same, and it's one of those things that you could see God touching their life, but I just knew in my heart that there was something special that had taken place. So anyway, we ministered uh, at this conference over there about the power of faith-filled words, and I thought it was really powerful. And one of the things that really blessed me through this whole teaching was that as I began to talk about how God had already given us all of this power 
and that the way we release it is by the words that we speak. One of the great results of this was that people, instead of coming and just wanting me to pray for them or one of our Bible college students, they began to start realizing the power and the authority that they had. And I mean, people were coming up and telling me that they agreed with me as I led them in prayer. They took authority. They spoke. And there were miraculous testimonies. Matter of fact, some of these testimonies, I believe my television department is going to document. But we actually saw... Uh, two boys, and this was in previous years when I had been there. A woman brought her sons up to me, two sons, who had a disease. I forget the exact name of it. It's something like Asperger's disease or something, but it's a form or, an, or similar to uh, autism. And these children were in severe, uh, they had severe problems. The oldest one wasn't quite as severe, but the young one was having seizures and things. And this woman had me pray and agree, but she took her authority and believed. And I think within one year period of time, uh, the children have been just miraculously healed. The old, oldest one has been pronounced completely free of this problem by the medical profession. The younger one, the day that I prayed with him, his seizures at night stopped. And it is just miraculous. And like I said, I think that we'll probably be doing some kind of a story on that to give you a greater detail, but I saw a lot of miraculous healings happen. And then we went over to Holland, and we did uh, some services. We did three services in one day at an outlet in Holland, had about seven or 800 people show up, and I tell you, there were tremendous testimonies of people's lives being changed. Also, I got to visit our Holland Bible College. We have nearly 100 students in our CBC school there and Mark Becking has just done a great job. He and his wife actually went to our school in the UK and then went back and started the school there in Amsterdam. And I tell you, I was very impressed. They have put over 20,000 hours into translating our first year curriculum into the Dutch language. And everything that they've done is with excellence. The people's lives were being changed and I was just really excited. And after this meeting, I think that we're going to have a lot more students in that school. So that's already become one of our largest extension schools right there in Holland. And then we went to France, and we held meetings in um, Paris, France, and also in Nice, France. And uh, I tell you, every place we went was totally different. But in Paris, we actually got to minister in the oldest uh, theater in Paris, Mozart and a lot of other really famous people performed and, and uh, were in that theater. And uh, of course, it's seen better days. It was kind of in a dilapidated state, but uh, we had a great meeting there, saw a lot of people born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit. We went on to Nice. This is where our missionary, Marie Helene Moulin, and her sister, Boul, and they are just awesome people. I tell you, I love those two ladies. They have dedicated their life to the Lord, and they were in Nice. We ministered with them in their church. I got to meet a woman that came to our meeting that pulled up her sleeve and showed me the tattoo, and she was in Auschwitz, and she saw her, I, I forget the exact details, but I know it was her father and mother, and I think other members of her family died in Auschwitz, and she was just rescued at the very last moment. I tell you, it was amazing talking to her. And she was a Jew, had gotten born again, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at my meetings. And we also prayed with her for healing. We saw a lot of great things happen. And then we went on to Milan, or as the Italians call it, uh, Milano, Italy. And I ministered there. And I tell you, we are seeing just people come, people came from Switzerland, from all over Italy. They came from uh, Germany and different places to these meetings and the Word of God is making an impact all around the world. So I'd like to just take a, a little bit of time here and have our TV department run the interview that I did with Marie Helene Moulin at her house uh, just outside of Nice, France, and then I'll be right back at the end of this program. So talk about us being at your church here last night today. So it was uh, such a blessed time. The word was uh, absolutely um, uh, on time. It was a specific word that the people needed to hear. 
and of course as a pastor knowing uh, lives of people uh, I knew how what you brought was really from God I mean you didn't have any knowledge uh, I found that there was much word of knowledge coming through the, your teaching and uh, I'm, I'm glad you said what you said uh, which uh, partly was also confirming what I had uh, um, talked with some of the people um, um, there were many visitors also that came from even abroad uh, because they knew that you were in town like I know there are people coming from Scotland there were also some people coming from south of France the other part of France some from Lyon uh, further north we had a great visit and there were some people also from another church uh, who came because there was one lady who is used to listen to you uh, on TV. Um, so she told her friend and uh, they came. Uh, the word was, uh, was really, really precise. Uh, I, I mean, as a pastor, uh, I'm blessed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a building up of the church. And I appreciate that because I've found that every time you have come, you have build, built up. Uh, do you remember this uh, minister's meeting? You used to come. Um, and uh, I mean, everybody said that uh, they were left with a word from God and a touch from God. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you do, like uh, how many churches you pastor and mm -hmm. what, what your ministry is like, what you do. Yes. Uh, I, well, I pastor the main church in Nice, um, and we started in Monaco, actually. We stayed there for four years, but you know, in Monaco, people are Catholic by birth, and so because of that, you know, uh, another denomination is really uh, not accepted. There are some Protestants in Monaco because of grace, Prince's grace, but uh, even they have a, a certain lease on their building. And then, I don't know what happened, but it's not like they are not really opening up to uh, the preaching of the gospel other than by the Catholics. So I wrote, I stayed there four years, and I wrote uh, four years, four times to the government to say, hey, could I become official because we want to establish a church and we want to be a blessing to the people of Monaco. Monaco is a specific area. Uh, it's known for um, people who are wealthy and you know there are some tax uh, arrangements but uh, they are very miserable because money does not uh, answer the need in the heart of men. They are very aware of that. And you can show one Ferrari and five porches, but you know, when you have done that, uh, this does not suffice either. And so I was, uh, I was very, very drawn to that. I really had compassion for all these. But the government said no four times. And uh, so since you cannot pass out tracks, uh, in the streets, uh, you have cameras everywhere, you have policemen everywhere. Well, you know, you're very limited. You cannot be, go public. What was kind of a blessing is that I, uh, I never got <laughs> put, never be put into jail. Uh, some people have been arrested, some people have been uh, required by the police to stop uh, meeting. But never me. Uh, the Lord blessed me. So after um, asking the Lord what I should do, I felt that I should go to France. You know, Monaco is only like two kilometers square, quite small, but still it's a country by itself. So uh, I'm French and uh, I was living in France and I felt that uh, we should move on and uh, reach out more people, have a bigger influence, public, open. So we moved to Menton. And then, um, uh, it's, uh, Monton is a small town, and finding a building was a huge challenge. But, you know, we went to one service, two services, and uh, it was not enough, and so the Lord said, move to Nice. So we have been in Nice now for like, uh, I think almost four years, 
and it has totally changed the church because we feel we have much more space, uh, it's much more open, there is a new boldness that come, came on the people and in fact the church uh, is uh, growing. We have seen, yes, new, new people coming in. And in the meantime, we started a church in Brittany, uh, where I'm from, which meant a lot to me when the Lord told me uh, to start a church there. And the church is doing really well. The, a couple is pastoring the church. Our mother is attending the church. And um, we also have another church in Marseille. Now we are believing for the right pastor to come. In the meantime, so I'm pastoring the church and the word is producing a tremendous fruit. I mean, really the lives of the people are changed and I see them once a week. So this is the power of the word. It's not about human being, personality, or, it's the power of the word of God. And um, for uh, three months now, once a month, we have started a church in uh, Toulon, which is still south. Uh, between Marseille and uh, Nice and so we w this is what we want to do and uh, this is what you have been helping us to do uh, your support has been a tremendous tremendous encouragement um, because you know we couldn't do it and I know it has to be the Lord we do uh, of course are aware of that but you know you have to find people who see the call who understand uh, the, the place and uh, who want to, uh, to be a part. So this has been, uh, I mean, I have no words to, to thank you and your, your partners. Fancy that, <laughs> um, is that, uh, you know, ministers here in Nice don't want relationship with me because I preach prosperity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they can't understand why we are in the hotel where we weren't. They can't understand why our church is growing. And I mean, you know, they see the life of the people. You hear, you know, how such and such church is doing, etc. Why we have, you know, a van and even as a church. This in France means something. So they don't want fellowship with me, but there are a lot of things they can't explain. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to the partners of Andrew Mac Ministries, um, you know, God is pleased with all of that, and there is much fruit. There is much fruit. Now, you have ministry outside of just your churches, like I've been at your uh, ministers' conferences. So yes. you're, there's a lot of uh, ministers that look to you for mm -hmm. leadership. Yes, yes. And, um, yes, I, do, I did uh, ministers' conferences, and it's going to... Um, I've stopped for a while. And uh, this is something that I want to do again. I really want to do that again. And, uh, you know, what I was talking uh, about was with the ministers here in Nice specifically, but in Marseille, I'm part of the pastoral group. And uh, I have a great relationship. I'm very respected. They didn't know what to do with me first because I'm a woman. <laughs> but they have seen the fruit and they you know they hear that uh, I don't have feathers on my head or <laughs> what's the spiritual climate of French people what are they like what's the situation well it it things have changed uh, it's much easier to to witness to people it's all they are responding much with more kindness I would say um, there is still one thing, they do not have the consciousness of God. They are not conscious that God is and that, you know, if you don't have the consciousness of the existence of God, talk about his provision, talk about the need of salvation, and that is, uh, they have been used to live without him. But, uh, again, at least their heart is not as hard as it is used to be. It used to be that you would witness to people and pass out a track, you know, in France, and they would tear it up in front of you. Mm. I mean, it's rude, just that. But, you know, they would just despise you. Ignore you is one thing, but despise you is another thing. But these things are changing. We find them more. And another thing is that, beside this situation, you know, in Nice, we find that, 
pastors want to work more and more together, which is new for our country, very new for our country. That's good. Yes, it is. It is. I mean, so, do you, know, you have a vision? Uh, I know that you're going to keep doing what you're doing, but do you, you have any vision for doing more churches? Oh or yes. What What is you think? Well, I I want. I, I'm shooting for the church in Nice. I want three thousand people in Nice. I know for American people it doesn't seem like you know huge and big, but for us, and this is. A goal and then you know uh, more but this is the immediate goal and I uh, I want to see 100 churches uh, in France uh, this is my heart to raise up ministers and that's why I like your word your word when you bring the word is you're not trying to smooth out uh, you're not trying to be kind I mean you're not mean <laughs> but you're not trying to compromise and, uh, you know, when you want to raise ministers and strong leaders, you just cannot make it look like their flesh can go any, do any, anywhere, any, anything they want to do. And so I appreciate that very much. To me, it's very much reinforcing uh, the vision here. So 100 churches, definitely 100 churches in France. So I'm sure a lot of our partners will probably want to pray for you and, and oh, they'll now you. feel a connection with you. So how would they pray for you? What is it that you would encourage them to do? Well, I will encourage them uh, that uh, ministers, strong ministers, will uh, grow out of this church and uh, be ready because, you know, we know that it's one thing to have the word, but character has to be strong enough. And this has been my concern. I, you know, this might be one of the reasons why things, in a way, has been slow, is that I've been waiting for character to, to bear up the, the challenge of the ministry, the responsibility before God and before man. And so strong ministers, most definitely. Uh, you know, to, do, uh, to all do that also, of course, we need a building. And... Uh, Nice is not industrious, so, uh, but also meaning that you know, in industrial cities you've got a lot of uh, different stores and buildings, but still God has one place for us. So to believe you know, that we see that place and also I want TV and radio. This is something, I believe this is a, a mean of influence and uh, for more books because we also publish books and you know we distribute your books mm -hmm. these needs to all of the French speaking word and the wisdom to do it so praise God I hope that that blessed you I tell you this woman is a powerful woman I, I could spend a lot of time talking about her but her and her sister have just dedicated their lives to serving the Lord they started out in Monaco and of course that's a Catholic country you can't be a citizen there without being Catholic and they outlaw all Protestant or non-Catholic things and Marie Helene, Marie Helene Moulin went head to head with the government there for four or five years and finally just uh, to continue ministering she had to move out of there but she has a uh, strong strong uh, faith in the Lord and God is doing awesome things and I want to say thanks to those of you who are partners because you may not know it but your partnership uh, we have been supporting Marie and Boole uh, for many many years and they couldn't do the things that they're doing without our support now there's other people that support them too I'm not saying we're their only source of support but you who have been partners you have a part in everything that they're doing and I tell you they are making a difference in France. So I just wanted to give you this quick update on our trip to Europe, June 2011. You were a big part of it. Thank you for sending us and make sure that you write in or call and get our materials. The faithful support of partners makes this program possible. We invite you to join Andrew as he spreads the message of God's unconditional love and grace. Write, call, or visit our website and become a partner today. Are you a world changer? Karis Bible College has extension schools around the world. The same truth that sets you free at our school in England will also set you free in Belfast, St. Petersburg, Amsterdam,
Kampala, Chennai, and South Africa. Go to awme.net or call our phone center and ask for a complete list of Karis Bible College locations near you. Change your life. Change the world. Andrew's complete teaching series titled, You've Already Got It, is available on either CD or on DVD as seen on our daily TV program. Each is offered for 19 pounds. Remember to specify the CD or DVD when you order. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net. After choosing English, click on Resources at the top of the page and then MP3 Downloads. Or, if you prefer, You've Already Got It is available in book form when you send £9.99. You can also get this teaching in a companion study guide for £17.50 when you contact the ministry. The fifth audio teaching in today's series is available for £3 when you write or call. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this fifth CD titled, Do You Need More Faith? Free of Charge. A condensed version of You've Already Got It is also included in Andrew's latest book titled, Sharper Than a Two-Edged Sword. This valuable book contains abbreviated versions of 16 of Andrew's most foundational teachings. It's available for £9.99 when you contact us. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922-473-300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44-1922-473-300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Or you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Colorado Springs for the annual Andrew Womack Ministers Conference, October 3rd through the 7th, and in Karlsruhe, Germany, October 21st through the 23rd. He'll also be in Warwick, England for the Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe Ministers Conference, October 24th through the 26th, in Kampala, Uganda for a Gospel Truth Seminar, October 28th and 29th, and at the Glory of Christ Church in Kampala, Sunday, October 30th. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net.